Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to check to see if your application is running in Docker as well as Kubernetes. This could be useful if you're transitioning into using containers and maybe you want your application to be configured slightly differently, or maybe do something slightly different depending on if it's running in a container or not. Likewise, you might already be using Docker, such as Docker Compose in production, and now you're about to use Kubernetes, but you'd like to be able to use the same Docker image in both environments, but maybe your web server needs to be configured a little bit differently in Kubernetes, so you can do a check there to see if it's running in Kubernetes or not. But uh, we're going to be looking at this example Dockerized Flask app. It's available on GitHub. I'll leave a link to this one in the description if you want to check it out. If not, feel free to sit back and relax while we go over some stuff here. So let me just go ahead and up this project first, just so we can see in action here, because we are going to be connecting to it and running some commands. But yeah, let's start with the use case of actually just detecting if your application is running in Docker or not. Now, this example project has a shortcut. I can do run shell. That's going to put me into basically an interactive bash prompt here in the container. But if you don't have that set up, you know, I'm basically just doing the Docker Compose exact web and then bash there and here we are. So yeah, let's say your app is running. How do I know I'm running in Docker? Well, there's a couple of different ways we can do this one. So if we go to the root of the file system here, there is going to be a file created by Docker called dot Docker ENV. Now, there is a GitHub issue open from uh, a couple of years ago here where Docker suggests actually not using this file. You know, maybe it's going to go away in the future. Maybe it's not, not really a good way to detect if your application is running inside of Docker or not. You know, someone else also follows up eventually here where, uh, yeah, maybe you shouldn't use that one here. But, um, you know, also if you happen to be using Podman instead of Docker, this file won't exist. So that's probably not the best method anyways if you're just looking for maximum compatibility. Now, there's a lot of little things we could check, you know, C groups uh, looking for certain things. But, you know, you could just take the low tech approach here and just define an environment variable in your application. And then when your application is running in Docker, you set that environment variable, but when it's not running in Docker, you don't. And then you have uh, a surefire way to detect if your application is running in Docker or not. For example, you know, if I go to my code editor here, let's play around with this a little bit to show you what I mean here. So this is an ENV file. It's going to be loaded up through Docker. So my application will have all the environment variables defined here available to it. So if I just create a new uh, environment variable called like Docker runtime one, you know, the name doesn't matter here, but you know, let's describe what this actually is here, right? It's basically, hey, am I running inside of uh, Docker here? Or you can name this container runtime if you want it to be a little bit more generic, if you happen to be using Podman or, or a different container runtime as well. Uh, that's not really too important here. But yeah, let me just restart this so the ENV gets picked up here. And uh, now when I run this here, we can see if I go and run shell and then run env, we'll just grep out uh, environment variables that start with docker underscore. Now there's quite a few here. These are all defined in my env file here, but the one that we're looking for is the runtime one, which we set here. So right away, you know, if you had some application code, you know, depending on what language or web framework that you're using, you could then, when your application boots up, just look for this environment variable. If it's set and defined to one, then can you be like, yeah, okay, cool. I'm running in a container. Now I can do whatever different things I need to do there. And then of course, you know, in your non dockerized environment, you just wouldn't set this environment variable and then uh, that's it. You know, your app wouldn't perform that extra logic. And I think this is a pretty nice way to do this one because, you know, you're in full control of being able to set these ENVs. You know, it's not related to something that may or may not exist in the file system. So, you know, you're in control of your own application. Yeah, set the ENV and you're good to go. So that's exactly what I would do if I wanted to do that. Now, you know, you can make a case that maybe your application should work the same if it's running in both environments, but I totally understand uh, the real world happens, right? You know, I'm not here to preach to you to be like, well, you should change your web frame or, or refactor everything, but sometimes you just want to get the job done, right? Maybe you're, you're transitioning for a period of a couple of weeks and you just want to get something to work. And then eventually, yeah, you're going to, you know, fully move to Docker or fully move to Kubernetes or whatever. And uh, then things are going to be nice in the end. But for now, you just want to be able to do something slightly different. I get it. Cool. So yeah, that is one way to check whether or not things are running in Docker or not. Now, let's say that your application is running in Kubernetes or Docker. Well, I mean, honestly, we can uh, do the same exact thing, right? In Kubernetes, you can set the ENV to be uh, Kubernetes runtime equals one or something like that. And then when your application is running in Docker Compose, you just wouldn't set that ENV and uh, you're totally done. Now, Kubernetes actually does set a few environment variables for you that will exist and uh, that will avoid you having to actually define your own environment variable. But if you want to define your own, just so you're in full control of that, that's totally fine here. But uh, I'll show you what I mean here. So I have a Kubernetes cluster running in the background now. So let me see if I go to, uh, we don't need to run this anymore. Let's see, kube. Uh, CTL get all a we're just going to take a look here at what's ever running here I just have a very basic web server here that echoes back things and uh, an nginx controller here It's not super important here. But yeah, let's say we exec into this container over here and we can do a cube 
uh, CTL, and then we'll exec into this pod here. We'll run bin bash. Cool, why not? And then that should put us into the container of uh, what's been running in Kubernetes now. Again, this is separate from uh, you know Docker Compose over here, but you know if we go in here and run the env command, there are going to be quite a few different environment variables set here. Now there's a lot here and uh, Kubernetes sets quite a few. So there's a whole bunch like Kubernetes service host uh, ports and different things. And you know, in this case, the service name is foo and there's another one for bar. And uh, you know, they all have their namespaced ones here. Now I like to use this one here, which is the Kubernetes service host. So just so this is a little bit less uh, spammy here, let me just do Kubernetes server service host. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, you know, this will always be defined with this name. You know, it doesn't really matter what the name of the service is. This environment variable will always exist and it will always be pointing to some IP address here. So we can basically have the same type of check, you know, if the application sees that this environment variable is defined, then you can configure whatever you want. Now there is one little difference here between, you know, the non Docker versus Docker setup and now the Docker versus Kubernetes setup. Well, you know, Docker has this one concept here of being able to run things at runtime with an entry point script. So in this example application, I do have an entry point script that basically copies some files. You know, I've done videos about this Dockerized app in the past, but basically, you know, the TLDR here is like this uh, script is going to run when this container starts here every single time. So when I up this project here, we are going to see the entry point script and we can see that it says hello world here. Uh, well, it did for a second ago. Yeah, there it goes over here. And uh, now what we could do is, you know, let's say that uh, the difference between Docker versus Kubernetes at runtime, you just wanna, I don't know, copy some config over to your web servers config and do something, right? Well, uh, you don't really need to modify your application for that one. Uh, you could just have this entry point script, do that check here for the ENV, and then, uh, you know, your script will then copy this. Well, this entry point script is going to, you know, copy over what you need to do. And then before your web application or web service runs or web server, then uh, that new config will be in place and it'll be good to go. So really this comes down to just basically writing an if condition, right? To be like, well, you know, if this Kubernetes uh, service host environment variable here, if I can type with underscores here, <laughs> if this thing exists, then, uh, you know, we can do, my God. Okay. Then we could do, you know, like, Yay, we're in Kubernetes like this. And then when I execute this now and restart things, you know, since we're not in Kubernetes, this, this environment variable is not going to exist. So we wouldn't expect to see the output over here in the terminal when this web server starts, which uh, we can see here, you know, we don't see that. So this happens to be a flask app running to unicorn. You know, we would have expected to see the output basically around this blue over here, but we don't see that. Um, now this is a shell scripting thing, basically just saying dash N, you know, is this environment variable defined? And is there like a non-empty value, right? Is it basically set? You know, you can do the opposite of that one. Um, you know, yeah, you were not in Kubernetes, right? Uh, depending on if you like Kubernetes or not. So in this case, we're basically just doing the opposite here. If we rerun this one, then uh, we would expect to see the output now because we're not in Kubernetes. And there we go, we can see the output over here. Yeah, this is just uh, one super basic way to do that. You know, of course, if you have more complicated logic where your application is doing something a little bit more different than like copying a config file before your web server starts, then yeah, maybe somewhere in your application's code, you can then check for this environment variable and you're good to go. But um, yeah, that's basically it for this one. And by the way, this little simple Kubernetes setup that I have, I've actually created a video in the past, like setting up uh, a local Kubernetes cluster with Kind and Terraform and Helm. And there's basically a little script that you can run to get that all up and running. If, if you wanted to follow along with that one, I'll leave a card up because yeah, I made that video quite some time ago. I actually just updated the blog post for that to use all the latest, newest versions of things and it all just works here. So cool. Uh, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer all of them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.